Hi, this is more or less a follow-up video on the previous video that I did on using Ableton Live with a tractor and a jack audio connection kit. And I ended that video with the following configuration from tractor decks A and B are sent to the output 1, 2, 3 and 4. Those outputs are then linked to Live's inputs so deck 1 goes to input 1 and 2, deck B goes to input 3 and 4, and then the output, the master output from live is sent to my system speakers. In Ableton it looks like this. I have two audio channels or audio tracks. The audio from is set to external in, 1, 2, which is deck A. This is deck B. There we go. Which uses the input 3, 4, external input 3, 4. Then I have configured the crossfading A and B, which now allows you to use the crossfader to switch between deck A and B. So putting it on the left side uh, enables deck A, on the right side enables deck B. And that already gives you something to work with, so you have your um, audio going from Tractor into Ableton and you can crossfade between uh, the two decks. The thing is though that if you know Tractor uh, you'll know that there are four decks so A, B, you see C here and D over here. So what if we want to send C and D over to Ableton? And to do that you would expect to send the C and D outputs to separate output channels in the preferences. So if you look at the output routing, you will see that deck A and B are sent to output 1, 2, 3 and 4. You would expect to send C and D to outputs as well. Thing is, there is only four output channels here. And to fix that, we need to uh, change the input and output channels in a Jack Audio Connection Kit. Close everything down including Ableton close this, I'm gonna stop this um, connection kit for now look into the setup and you will see an option here called channels which currently says default I expect it to just change this like to something like 10 then start the server again and expect both Ableton and Tractor to now have 10 channels available. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Well, at least it has no effect when using my um, internal sound card, so the sound card that is built into my computer. Changing this value does nothing. I haven't really tried with an external audio card yet, so maybe that does work. But with my internal audio card, this does nothing. But here's the good news. There's an easy fix which is explained on the Jack Audio website. Um, on their using Jack on Windows page, it says here that by default, Jack Router is set to provide four input and four output connections. This setting can be customized to suit your needs by editing the Jack Router ini file within your uh, installation folder. So let's go ahead and do that. I already have to folder open. So this is the Jack Audio installation folder. There's two folders here, 32 bits, 64 bits. I'm using the 32 bits version. There's a Jack Router ini file. Open that up and as you see input and output is set to 4. I'm going to change it to 10. Like that. And then just save the file. Now if you're on Windows Vista or Windows 7 it may not allow you to save the file. But we can fix that as well. And to do so, right click on the ini file, select properties, go into security, and it says here users. Um, you'll probably see something different than what I have here. Um, click on customize or alter or edit, then select user and tick all the boxes here. Then just click on apply and on OK, and then try and edit the file again, and you should be able to uh, save it now. Ok, we can close this now, go back to our uh, jack configuration. I'm going to put 10 back to uh, default. There we go, save it. 
Now, if you followed one of my previous videos, or I think my first video on the Jack Audio Connection Kit, um, I put 32 here in the maximum ports to allow. Uh, now that we changed the inputs, the default inputs and outputs to 10, the 32 will uh, not be enough. So just select 128 here, and that should be enough uh, ports for both uh, Ableton and Tractor. So with these changes, let's go ahead and start up Jack Audio Server. It has now started. Now I'm going to launch Live and Tractor. Okay, I have started both of them up. Go back to the Jack Audio. Let's look at the Connect and see if anything has changed. Yay! Look at that. Tractor now has 10 outputs. Ableton still has 2, but that's okay. 4. We need to enable them in the, the Ableton preferences. We need to enable the channels. And in Tractor, we now have 10 inputs. We don't need them, but they're there in case we need them. So, first things first, go to Live and make sure that we can use the input channels. As you can see, previously we had 1, 2, 3 and 4 enabled. I'm now going to enable all the other ones that are now became available. Click on OK, close this, and let's now go back to Tractor, File, Audio Setup, Output Routing. It has already automatically filled in uh, Deck C and Deck D for me. So previously we only had Output 1, 2, 3 and 4. We now have 5, 6, all the way up to 10. So Deck C goes to 5 and 6, and Deck D goes to 7 and 8. Click on close, nothing more to do here. Now let's match everything up in the connections window the from Jack Audio. Disconnect all, click yes, everything is gone now. Now I'm gonna match up all the or send all the outputs from Tractor into Ableton. Simply drag and drop. Bam, done. And my output from Ableton Live to the system. Hit refresh. There we go. Okay, that's done. Can close this now. Next thing is set up everything in Ableton. I'm gonna open my previous file again that had the two decks. I'm gonna duplicate these. Call this deck C and deck D. So I already have deck A and B set up to the external inputs, 1, 2, 3, 4, now we need 5, 6, 7 and 8. And for now I'm going to disable the crossfading for deck C and D. Let's move over to Tractor. As you can see I have both C and D set up as sample deck, but you can change it to track deck or uh, yeah, maybe even live input. But Let's try sample deck and see if I can find a sample somewhere. And again, just so you know, I've never used this before, so <laughs> I'm a novice. Deck C. And there we have the audio in Ableton. Deck D. Okay, so there we have it. All our decks A, B, C and D are now going from Tractor into uh, Ableton Live. And to round this video up, I would like to show you one more thing, which is sending audio from Ableton back into Tractor. To do so, go into the Preferences, select Audio, Output Config, it here says um, 1, 2 stereo. I'm going to enable 3, 4 stereo as well. Click on OK. And I'll add an audio sample to a new track. Disable the audio from, set it to no input. And the audio to, I'm going to set that to the external out. 
3 and 4. And those are the two outputs that I just enabled in the preferences. Next go into Tractor, File, Audio Setup. Now select Input Routing. Uh, as you can see currently there is nothing connected. What I want to do is DEC C. I want that to be the input 3 and 4. Like so. And the next thing to do is now connect uh, the outputs from Ableton to the input in Tractor, which is done in Jack Audio. Close this. Click on Connect in Jack Audio. Now, because we made some changes to the inputs and outputs, both in Ableton and Tractor, the connection kit may have changed your connections already. So, to be on the safe side, just disconnect all and we're gonna establish uh, all the needed connections manually again. And just so you know, once you have everything configured the way you want it, um, there's an option in Jack Audio that says Patch Bay. If you click on that, you can make a configuration here and save it and then reuse it so you don't have to do everything manually over and over again. So once you do have everything set up the way you want it, do have a look at the Patch Bay. Now, let's start by sending the tractor outputs to the live inputs. Click on refresh. Live output to the system output. So that should only send the 1 and 2 to the speakers. Now I'm gonna manually send 3 and 4 to the 3 and 4 in tractor, like so. Now as you can see there's 10 input channels. I just chose to use 3 and 4. I could have well used 1 and 2 or uh, 6, 7, 8, 9 and so on. But as you remember I set 3 and 4 to go to uh, input deck C. And now I need to change deck C to be the live input. Now live here doesn't mean Ableton Live, it just means live input. It just happens to be Ableton Live. Let's see if that works. Also note that we're now basically doing a round trip, so we're going from Ableton Live into Tractor to Deck C and then we're sending Deck C back to Ableton Live here in Deck C. Now to be honest I have no idea if this is common use but well it's possible <laughs> Okay, so there you have it, sending audio from Tractor into Ableton Live and the other way around, sending audio from Ableton Live into Tractor. Uh, thanks for watching.